optic disc reference glaucoma. If you are using Volk slit lamp biomicroscopy, and you should be, then don't forget to turn the record sheet upside down or you will confuse everyone. That's because the picture is upside down with your Volk. Find the rim edge. It's called the scleral ring. This is a faint pale rim that is easier to see on the temporal side. Use that to measure the disc both vertically and horizontally and draw its shape. You can use a coin if it's round. Dimension it of course. Draw it 10 times larger so 1.8 mm disc becomes an 18mm drawing. Be consistent. Everything the same size please. And colours the same. I use a biro for scleral rims blue and black and neural tissue red and the vessels red as well. Find the cup. The cup edge is difficult to see. Ignore colour changes but look either at the neural surface in stereo or the small vessels which are near the neural surface. Follow them from the scleral ring and they will change direction or kink as they go over the cup edge. The larger vessels are deeper and don't do this. It may be a sudden change or a gradual sloping change. Get its percent position by using percentages of the disc diameter. Positions within the disc area are best found by using percentages of the dis whole disc diameter. The neural layer can be wispy and difficult to see, so slit lamp not too bright and slit very small and look for stereo changes or vessel kinking. Draw the cup by dotting in the shape. Many people divide the disc into four retinal neural quadrants at 45 degrees, 135, 225 and 315 degrees and dot the cup one quadrant at a time. This is a good time to note any tilting and place the major axis of the tilt on your drawing. Now look for the origin of the central retinal vessels and using percentages draw them on your drawing in red and draw the way they travel. Carefully draw any little vessels that kink or move or change diameter. Now follow the edge and place any peripapillary atrophy into the drawing and label it. Now look at the surface of the neural layer as it dips and rises and draw in any areas where it's dropped down leaving vessels exposed or caused notching. In glaucoma damage one part of the neural layer is thinner and this can be seen in relation to retinal vessels which may stick out or be moved in the area. It's a rule that all the vessels should be covered by smooth, healthy neural tissue. By using a strong tiny beam you can make the neural tissue glow as it goes over the scleral ring. In glaucoma the neural tissue is too thin and it does not glow. As glaucoma is about the health of the neural layer it's best to label its thickness or cup depth in terms of vessel thicknesses. A vessel crossing the scleral ring is 120 microns thick about. We are looking at the thinning of the rim, localised pallor, notching, asymmetry of more than 0.2 between the discs, disc hemorrhages and a broken isn't rule. Then turn the record card round and label everything. Always trust your drawings. If you see something changing over the years, flag it up. Never think I drew it wrong back then. Sure, your drawing techniques change and improve over the years, but you will catch many glaucomas this way.